Australians suffer some form of mental health issue, but not everyone's journey is the same. The government's announced that the one-size-fits-all approach is no longer, and there'll be a more coordinated packages of care. And the purpose of today's forum is really to explore what, what's that going to look like, and the suite of services that will be on offer to meet an individual's needs. So now I'm delighted to introduce Jackie Crow, National Mental Health Commissioner, to speak to us. Please welcome Jackie. I love the title of the forum, Rethinking Mental Health. And I thought about that quite a lot as I was thinking about doing this presentation. Um, I love it because it's exactly what we need to do. People see the individual parts of the system working reasonably well. But they fail to see that the system as a whole is ineffective, inefficient, and importantly, unfair. This is simple within its statement but complex within its implementation, which is exactly what our reforms are. I am going to spend some time this morning um, just talking about the role of primary health networks and how we will support this. Uh, for us, it's about supporting a number of key elements, and they include um, assessing the needs of an individual, identifying what the evidence-based interventions are in our region, supporting the matching of these needs so that people get the right intensity of service at the right time, ensuring that care is appropriate throughout engagement and ensuring that follow-up and monitoring is embedded in what we do and that's another really important element of stepped care. Because ultimately when you manage a health system that oh, by the end of the Ford estimates will be valued at $79 billion, it's very big. But as I always say, and Sophie's heard me say this many times, we build the system for the people who it serves each and every day. And we therefore try to focus on them. And I therefore try to focus on them when it comes to policy. So for those who know what works at the family and community level, the job of government is to listen to that. Because we can't expect them to design a policy response, hey, that's our job, uh, to design that complex architecture but to make sure that they say, yes, it's actually working for us. That's the challenge, but that's the huge opportunity as well. We conducted a proof of concept um, evaluation. The aim was to design, implement, and evaluate the acceptability and feasibility of an online stepped care service integrated into general practice. So the overall vision is that mental health is viewed in the same way as physical health, with regular screening, monitoring, and review. The main facilitators identified by patients, practice staff and GPs included uh, the use of technology, the speed. I think Charlotte will attest that the practice uh, staff and GPs were very impressed that they got the data in real time so there was no um, delay when patients went in to see them. I was struck by how well we could use this iPad um, platform and the HealthLink real-time information for a whole lot of other things. I'm particularly passionate about preventive health care and this is just a great opportunity. You know, you could do some rolling um, sort of questionnaires sort of through the year. It might be, you know, diabetes risk, cardiovascular risk and throw in there the mental health stuff so that it again normalises what are the things that we're interested in. We really are interested in mental health. So I guess my question is, with all this great assessment of what actually is needed, will there be the supports, more vacancies, more so that the wait lists aren't so long and there aren't wait lists? those pathways are, um, are explored and other tools like the Health Pathways also gives um, GPs and providers information about what's available. All of these things um, that prevent um, some of our vulnerable communities from accessing service are things that we've um, tried to uh, identify. We're going to have a short break for morning tea. If you please go and visit some of the stands so you can find out about some of the great services that are out there. I'm most excited about the dogs, the mind dogs. I have a couple of clients who um, are in the process of getting them and 
many who are interested in getting them. Mind dogs are a companion, uh, they're a dog companion for clients who uh, experience mental health and just offer a different kind of support than we can. Now I'm in uh, the homelessness services, I just want to keep in touch with what's happening in mental health, what are the latest developments, what's best practice. Serious mental illness, which is the end of the spectrum that I generally work with, they need wraparound services. Um, people need to come together more and hopefully that's what's going to happen. When employment specialists and mental health professionals work collaboratively with a shared consumer toward a common employment goal, the consumer is three times more likely to reach that goal and sustain that employment. Two thirds of people presenting to public and private mental health services have experienced either sexual or physical abuse. If someone's scores, if their, their levels on those tools aren't decreasing, then it's flagged and they'll be stepped up. And I think it just reinforces, you know, the co-design that we're talking about is that we're getting much more um, apt at how we actually like um, make things happen. But I might just start by um, asking Tony, um, in a nutshell, sorry to pick on you first, how would you describe what a stepped care approach is to mental health? So yeah, I mean obviously it's a series of in interventions that just increase um, in intensity, um, but they need to be I think they need to be linked in meaningful ways, so people know that they can. That there's guidance in stepping through those kind of levels of care. And it's about the treatment of people with severe mental illnesses who could particularly benefit from some primary care, uh, particularly relating to metabolic disorders and other things. And I wonder if you had a vision for how that might work in a stepped care environment. Again, it's not about the diagnosis but it's about what are the interventions that a person requires. But I also take on board what this lady over here said in terms of that some of those services are already um, overworked and have long wait list. Um, and, um, and what I would recommend there is that uh, rather than go and create a whole lot of new services, if those ones already have rungs on the board and have good practices that PHN actually um, supports those services to expand. The effect of having the dog is that they become calmer which is a very good thing. They become more confident. They tend to take their meds on time because often the dog will bring them their meds at the right time. They can come off their meds safely. Because we don't want a perfectly obedient dog. We want dogs with really good manners. They have to have a very high standard of training, but it's not a dog that's forced to do something. It's a dog that would do things and use their intelligence. This dog lives in this area and his handler is a veteran with PTSD who was homeless and he wouldn't leave his dog so he couldn't get accommodation. Now his dog is certified as an assistance dog, legally accommodation can't be refused him so he now has accommodation. Well I've come to learn, I've come to learn to help others. Yes, that's exactly what I've come here for. People do have that ability to really do things for themselves, but they just need people to help them out and that, that is why we are here and that's what I've, I've always wanted to do. No matter what you're experiencing, that you can access a service that meets your needs and you feel comfortable with quickly and easily and affordably and we want to see, we want, that's the vision we hold um, for our community and we really hope to be part of making that happen and we will certainly work towards that. Up till now it's either been care from a GP or often you don't get care until you get to a crisis and what they want to do is look at that middle section that's missing at the moment and make sure that people in that middle section get the help that they really need. So it's, it's early days but it's going to be very exciting and I think today's forum was a, a really good step.